हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द ऑनलाइन सेशंस ऑफ द मटेरियल साइंस एंड मेटलर्जी मासल्स विवेक परिक वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द यूनिट दैट इज नोन एज एन मेटलिक मटेरियल्स एंड इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर्स व्हिच कैन बी ऑब्जर्व दैट इज माइक्रो एंड मैक्रो स्ट्रक्चर we have also gone for the studying of the different type of the fracture how the material fails that is brittle and ductile fracture and then at the end we have discussed one method for identification of the material that is the spark test with the help of the spark we can identify the material okay so now we will be going for the next topic that is about the how to prepare a specimen we have discussed about the micro examination how micro examination occurs that micro examination we are always observing under the microscope then which are the different types of the thing we cannot take the material directly for the thing that is under the microscope we cannot put that material so what happens we have to follow certain procedure and after the preparation of the specimen through that procedure we can observe it under the microscope so which are the different steps which are there for the preparation of the micro specimen the very first one that will be the selection of the specimen second one which will be that is the cutting the specimen third one mounting the specimen fourth comes the build polishing fifth comes paper polishing then comes the fine polishing and last one that is the second last applying each end so after application of the each end we can go for the viewing under the microscope so basically eight things we have to go after that we can see for the micro structure till that we cannot see anything if you directly place the material under the microscope so in this lecture we will be discussing all these different eight steps how we can go for the preparations of the micro specimen okay so we will be discussing this thing in a detailed thing so let us start with our very first step or you can see over here the whole steps which are there that is sampling first take the sample after that go for the polishing which type of the polishing that is rough polishing or the fine polishing after that sampling how sampling are done by the sectioning or by the mountaining rough is done with the help of the belt and paper whereas paper polishing wet method dry method and after that polishing we can go for the etching and microscopy basically all these eight types all these eight types are seen over here they are all indicated over here mainly they are of four steps sampling polishing etching microscopy okay so now let us start the thing that is the first one first step selection of the specimen when investigating the properties what we know if we are going to find out or we if we want to go for the specimen that which specimen you will be selecting if the material is not a failure then you will be going for the center region you will be going for the center region and if a material is failed then the fractured part we will be selecting so basically we will be selecting a material in such a way that we can get the all the properties which we require or which we want to find out in that way we will be selecting the material the whole specimen cannot be viewed under microscope so a proper small area should be selected which will represent the whole material now after that what we will be doing we will be going for the cutting the specimen after selection that yes we have decided that we we want this particular part to be tested under the microscope then what we will be going we will be going for the cutting now we have to remove that material from that particular part so how we can cut the material after selection we have want to properly cut that particular sample so approximately we will be taking a 20 mm diameter of the specimen and 20 by 20 thing we will be taking for that particular cutting the sample now how we can go for that thing we can go for the saw cutter or we can go for the hexo for removal or for the cutting of the specimen very small specimens they are very difficult to go for the particular thing so what we will be doing if the specimen is very much small we will be going for the mounting of the specimen that is our third step if specimen is larger enough then we can avoid mounting but if the specimen is smaller then we will be going for the mounting this is the machine cutter through which we can cut the material and this is the hacksaw through which we can cut the material if it is a very small material then we will be going for this hacksaw and if we have to only cut the material of a large size then we will be going for this cutter 
clear so this is how we will be cutting the specimen and we will be detecting out that particular part of the specimen from the material then comes the third step mounting of the specimen as i told you if the material is very much small then mounting is required mounting a specimen what it will provide it will gives you a safe standardized and ergonomic way by which we can hold the specimen very perfectly why because if the specimen is small enough then we cannot hold it properly so for holding the specimen properly for the other steps we always go for the mounting of the specimen then a thermosetting plastic which material we are using a thermosetting plastic which is used for that mounting purpose normally buckelite we are going for that buckelite material is used for the mounting purposes standard mounting they are generally of the 25 mm diameter and 12 mm thickness we will be going this is how you can see the mounting is done if this is your specimen after mounting it will look like this and if you fracture the material it comes as this thing so you can see over here for proper gripping we can go for this thing otherwise what will happen if you hold the material these edges are sharp enough and it will hurt your hand so that is why mounting we are doing for the proper type of the grip and for the other purpose is clear so the third step that is known as a mounting the specimen then come the fourth step which is known as a belt polishing now what do you mean by that belt polishing belt polishing is used for flattening the surface of the material what we are doing we are going for the flattening of the surface means both the surfaces top and the bottom surface we are going for the flatness of the material if we are going for the mounting then one side will be automatically flat enough we have to only go for the second side where the material is there for the flatness the surface of the metal or alloy they are irregular and they are to be removed for the preparation of the specimen if metal is not flat enough from both the sides then what we will be doing then if we place under the microscope then the light will be reflected and as a result what will happen due to the reflection of the light we cannot see anything under the microscope so that is the main requirement why we are going for the flatness of the material clear for the reflection of the light what we are going after that we will be going for the belt polishing and you can see over here this is the thing our sample is placed over here this is the belt under it which will be moving in this way and as a result this is one type of the emery paper which we are using the rough emery paper what it will do it will remove the surface and as a result what will happen the material will become a flat enough so the belt polishing is used for the flattening of the surface clear so now let us begin with our next that is known as an paper polishing that is our fifth step paper polishing that is in the polishing we require the use of the emery paper different types of the grades like 220 400 600 800 and 1000 emery papers we will be using firstly from the belt polishing we are taking the specimen and then we will be going on the 220 what is that 220 400 they are the mesh numbers emery paper size mesh number and on increasing that thing we will be proceeding further 220 is the rough material or the rough emery paper and 1000 it will be the smoothest emery paper first we will go on the 220 we will be taking our emery paper and what we will be doing we will be taking the sample and we will be hitting in one direction we will be going for the scraping of that particular sample in this way in any of the one direction so as a result what will happen the bottom of the surface it will be the material will be removed and the scratches are formed at the bottom of the surface the polishing is carried out manually on the surface and what we have to go after that to and fro direction after completion when you get each and every cracks in a particular same direction you will be changing your emery paper from 220 you will be going on the 400 for that what you will be doing you will be changing your material that 90 degree and then we will be going for the particular paper polishing what will happen first the cracks will be in this way after that what will happen it will be in the perpendicular direction and the new scratches will be in this form so as a result we can find out that the whatever the new scratches are there when each and every scratch new scratches are only there on the specimen then we will be proceeding on the 600 after changing of the 90 degree then comes the 800 in this way we will move up to 
emery paper in 1000 emery paper whatever the scratches are there on the emery paper they are very much close to each other as a result we will decrease the size of the cracks as we proceed from 220 to 1000 the same surface is polished on the emery paper by rotating the specimen at the 90 degree and in this way we will be completing our paper polishing how does the emery paper looks the emery papers are of this different types of the grades we can use this type of the paper these are the thing take the sample move to and fro on this surface so what will happen the polishing will be done so whatever the sample is there the cracks will be in this direction whenever each and every crack is there in this direction you have to change it 90 degrees so your cracks becomes like this after that move on the another paper and then once again go for the to and fro so what will happen perpendicular the new cracks will start whenever each and every crack will be of the new direction then you can proceed further and after that your paper polishing step will get completed next the sixth step that is coming that is known as a fine polishing step fine polishing means whatever the cracks which are there on the material they are removed with the help of the fine polishing for that fine polishing we will be going for the wet in that we will be using alumina oxide water and velvet paper there will be a velvet paper why because it is the smoothest surface al2o3 also we are using why we are going for the al2o3 because al2o3 will help to remove the scratches from the material and water will act as a lubricant that's why because the surface of the specimen is metal so whenever a metal and a cloth is there it will tear out the cloth so for that reason water is used as a lubricant when you place your sample on a rotating velvet cloth as a result what will happen the material the scratches will be removed from the material all the scratches will be removed and we will get a mirror like finishing on the surface this is the thing from here water will be coming over here take a alumina oxide and alumina oxide paste and put it on this disc this disc is of the velvet paper take a span specimen hold it and this disc will be rotating and as a result we will get a mirror like of the image on that particular sample and after that we will go for the application of the etchan to visualize the difference between the grains and the grain boundaries under the microscope we are going for the etchan they are the one type of the acids which are applied on the polished surface for about 5 to 10 seconds after that the specimen is washed and then it is directly taken into the microscope etchants they are also used to differentiate between the two metals in an alloy if you are having an alloy then it will directly differentiate the two different metals and because of that thing etchant is the necessary requirement while before viewing under the microscope why because if you are not applying etchant each and everything will appear same you cannot differentiate the grains and the grain boundaries or the two different metals clear so there are many different methods for the etchant application that is immersion methods fabbing method or spraying method we can go for the application of the etchant and the majorly used etchant they are known as a nettle and the pickerel clear and last step which is viewing under the microscope take the specimen place it under the microscope and after that you can observe the microstructure from the microscope this is the metallurgical microscope and here the specimen where we will be placing that is the specimen we will be placing it over here and this type of the things we can find out with the help of the microscope clear so this was all about the different types of the steps which are required for the preparation of the micro specimen clear how does the microscope works what is the basic principle behind the construction principle of the microscope and the different methods like sulfur printing phosphorus printing we will be discussing it in our upcoming lectures clear so till then thank you